Yes, sir. There we go. I'm moving right by the modem and everything. We ain't got no more malfunctions. I'm right by the modem. It's all. <laughs> we good. We good, man. Again, <clears throat> have to make sure we give you the uh, proper introduction. Um, again, we want to thank you for taking the time out. Just to take time out of his precious schedule to chop it up with us and kick it with us. Um, for those who may not know who we are kicking it with to, tonight, this evening, we have one of Tennessee's finest, uh, former University of Tennessee standout, former certified pro, uh, certified tough, big man. We have Mr. Ron Slate. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate, that. Appreciate, Appreciate you, my brother. Most definitely. You. Yes. And, um, you know, as, 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 as you may know, shout out to our guy, Kwar. Close the door, Ron. The Kwar Panero, formerly known as the Kwan Dean. Just yeah, yeah my man me. Dean, man. Yes, sir. Chopped it up with him uh, a couple of days ago. Excellent, excellent, excellent individual. Incredible story. Um, as you know, the platform the podcast, the page, the premise, the premise of it, of, of, of it all in a nutshell is basically paying homage to the guys like yourself and the, 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 the Tyrone Grants and, and the Terrell McIntyres, yeah. the Scooney Pens and yeah. the Antoine Walkers, the, the Tony Bennett's and all the guys that have played um, at the highest levels some the league a lot you know overseas and some mm -hmm. probably you know didn't even get a chance to play overseas but the mere fact that you guys have left your mark and pretty much played your part you know within this game uh this is why we salute you guys and and we're paying homage to you guys so again man thank you thank you again for joining us man no doubt before you even go any further let me give a shout out to them man the, all the guys you just mentioned man like it, this, it's no me coming along, man. Being able to have the type of career I did, man, without them guys paying it forward, man. Ty Grant, man, wild boy, <laughs> wild boy. I thought I was wild. I thought I was wild, man. I met Tyrone in Italy, dog, and I, everybody. I used to hear all the stories, like, man, this a four man dude, dude get busy. You know what I mean? On that baseline, this, that, that. I'm like, man, what's the dude they talking about? And I met him. And I said, damn. Hey, I mess with I mess with this cat here, man. Listen, he way. It, it, it's so funny because right before you and I, you and I came on, I was just on with him, and he was like, "Listen, man." He said, "Listen," as he said, "Ask my young boy Ron Slate." Ask him, man. He said, "Ask my young boy Ron Slate." Hey, Ty, Ty is a nut, man. He's been like that forever, man, forever. But yeah. excellent, excellent dude, man. Excellent dude. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, one of the first questions. One of the first questions that, you know, we have for you is paint the picture for us. What was it like coming up? Uh, Nashville, Tennessee, born and raised? Um, yes, yeah, a lot to go into it, man. It's, okay, it's now, yeah, no, no. That's, that's, I, look, we, 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 we basically want to know. Right. How did you get started with the game? How did you fall in love with the game? And right. who, were, who were some of your early influences okay um starting from the beginning man i was born in memphis um my pop side um is from covington tennessee uh, which is west tennessee probably about 45 30 minutes 30 45 minutes from memphis and my mom's uh my mom's family is from chattanooga which is east tennessee all as far okay. east as you can go far west as you can go you know what i mean um they met at tsu tennessee state university and uh, my, my, my pops was a, a cold running back. You know what I mean? He had an opportunity to do some great things, um, a little stint in the league. But <clears throat> uh, my mom was the first uh, volleyball, black volleyball player at UTC, at University of <laughs> Chattanooga. So, you know what I mean? It was, um, the genes were there. You know what I mean? They met up, had me. I was born in Memphis, stayed there a couple of months with my grandparents there, then moved um, to Chattanooga with my, with my mother's grandparents. Um, while she was still in school and coaching and doing what she was doing. So I came back to Nashville when I was about eight or nine. Okay. You know, I was always up here in the summer. And my mom was, uh, when, when she was at TSU, she started coaching volleyball. 
was involved in um, the women's basketball game a lot. Um, also was a cheerleading coach. So she was a jack of all trades up there. So I grew up at Tennessee State University, HBCU, you know what I mean? Wow. So yeah, yeah, mad love for them, man, um, at, at, at uh, Tennessee State. I was a TSU baby. So I came up with, when I got up here to Nashville, they had a great team. You know, they had guys, um, a guy, oh, damn, what's their name? Daryl, I ain't never forgot his name either. Daryl, shoot the shit. Daryl Brooks from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Shoot the shit out the ball. Probably about 93, 92, 93, somewhere along in there. And Anthony Mason was the big man. You know At I mean? Tennessee State, yes. Yes. Tennessee State, so. Rest in peace, um, Anthony Mason. Yeah, R.I.P. A. Mason, man, my guy. Um, so, you know, he used to uh, babysit me a lot, you know what I mean? So I, I was a TSU baby, and my mom had to um, do practices and stuff. She'd be like, Mason, keep watching you know, I go up in the dorm with Mason and chill, you know what I mean? I'm getting <laughs> or eye open to a whole lot of stuff, you know what I mean? And that's my man, you know what I mean? So the same thing, though, I would, I would tell my mom, let me go watch them practice. You know what I'm saying? So I would go down there and watch TSU practice, and um, I start falling into falling in love with the game then. Um, <laughs> so then I became a ball boy for TSU and got to go on road trips. You know, OBC is kind of – Small, you know, you can get done three three hours at the most. So Chili's were going, which means the ball boys were going. I was going. So I remember being able to watch Anthony Mason, man, and it's like, damn, they let the big dude handle the ball at the power forward spot. He was a little bit chunky at him before he yes. got hurt. You know what I mean? And I was like, dang, that's impressive, you know. So I got involved in junior pro, um, junior pro basketball, and um came up through the ranks, uh, moved from Side to side in Nashville, east side, west side, south side, and all, uh, but not south side, north side. And, you know, I, I met a lot of people at growing up at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and my mom was always influential throughout the community, um, even with us moving and not having a stable home. You know, we were still moving place to place, but the stable, the stability came from the Boys and Girls Club. Mm. And one thing that you always got in the Boys and Girls Club is the gym. You know what I mean? And that was that was the, the safe haven. So no matter what kids were doing, no matter how bad they were, they would always come to Boys and Girls Club. And I was a young one. And I was taller than everybody, but the big dudes wouldn't let me play. So I used to watch. You know what I mean? So when they finished, when they finished getting up, I'm out there playing in my head, man. I'm Magic Johnson. You know what I mean? I'm Anthony Mason. And I always gravitated to bigger guys that were able to handle the ball. And it stuck with me. I started loving it about 11, 12 years old. Start growing into my body. Went to um, West End Middle School. Start wearing the headband. And from that point on, <clears throat> once I got ready to go into high school, like, I was able to hone my talent. You know what I mean? I finally caught up with my body the way it was growing. And everybody that I used to think about, um, like Anthony Mason, Darrell Brooks, Carlos Rogers, um, they're from Tennessee State, um, they, they, Daryl Wilson, and um, also like the women's, I'm going to lead them out, the women's basketball team, which was better than the men's at the time at TSU, mm. um, I, was on, I was on them, you know what I mean? We had some greats, Carolyn Aldridge, um, Darlene Jackson, the list goes on and on, but I was watching them also, and I like, got a lot of skill from watching the women's game. Wow. I got the rough, rough neck from watching guys like Mason, you know what I mean? And, mm. and, and, and it all jailed together so by the time I got to middle school eighth grade you know I was thinking of a way to separate myself so me and my cousin Marcus Fisher we started wearing the headband and took off from there and and once we got once I got to high school getting ready to go to ninth grade Pearl Cone it, it, I had my eyes set on something you know what I mean like I want to do this and and, and be like them I, I remember the Gentry Center at Tennessee State University being packed you know what I mean? I'm like, damn, look at this crowd, man. Like, I want them, I want, I want them same people because the high school I was getting ready to go to was right down the street from Tennessee State. Mm. I want them same people to come support me over here. And I want to have it rocking like that, too. So it was, um, that's when I fell in love, man, probably about 12, 13 years old. I always had the love of different sports. Football was a love. But once, once basketball kicked in, it was, it was, it was different. When, when did you realize that like, or when did you say to yourself, like, yo, you know what? Like, I'm all right. Like, not, not yeah. just okay. Yeah. Like, 
I'm all right. Like, I can play. I remember it. Um, I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I See, down here in, that, in Tennessee, everybody knows about Memphis. You know what I mean? And, and, and as they should. You know what I mean? It's well-deserved. Nashville, we always felt like, man, they leaving us. Hold on, dog. Like, we got some ballers down here, too. You know what I mean? Don't, don't forget about us over in Cashville. It's real. You know what I mean? So, at that time coming along, you know, we had guys like Mingo Johnson going to Memphis State, David Vaughn. You know, we had Ron Mercer coming around, Dante Jones, um, Corey Allen. Like, we had some we had some big-name guys. And even in the past with Charles Davis being here, you know what I mean? This, we had some, some Hal McClain. Like, the list goes on and on, but we kind of got lost when uh, my era was coming along, even though it was a flux of talent in the in the city. Um, we brought it back my sophomore year, coming out of my sophomore year at Pearl Cone High School, I was able to go to ABCD camp. What was that experience like? So this was my eye-opening experience to, it's more basketball, basketball out here other than Memphis and Nashville. Mm. You know? He like, so I get up there. Matter of fact, Memphis and let me say this: Memphis and Nashville really don't get along. You know what I mean? We feel like they on shites, and they and they feel like we 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 slow to it. You know what I mean? So that's out in the forefront. But you know what I mean? It's, it's some great bonds there too. You know what I mean? But in the past, it was it was a little ugly. So mm. I'm supposed to ride with these cats from Memphis to ABCD camp. Me and my mom waiting. They're like they'll be here by six. Y'all gonna roll up there? I'm like cool. Six o'clock come in the morning. I'm on the doorstep, waiting. Like, ain't nobody coming. Seven o'clock come. Nobody coming. Eight o'clock. Get all the way to about noon, man. And I'm like, man, they just dog me like this, man. Like, how they gonna leave me? You know what I mean, they know I gotta be involved in this. You feel me? So my mom was like, get it. She jumped in the, um, the S10, a boyfriend S10, little two dollar Chevy S10. We ride all the way to Tennant, New Jersey. You know what I mean? Bumping good at Bob the entire way, still standing. I know that I know that album front to back, you know what I mean? And my mom, she was letting me listen to it because there was it was some cultural, you know what I mean, influences. So you so so these dudes, they never pick you up. No. Come wrong. Moms, and God bless her heart, man. That, man. That, that, that. Listen, she hops in the car with you and you drive from Tennessee. All the way to Teaneck, New Jersey. Yes, sir. Bumping, bumping Goody Mob. Goody Mob. I, I don't even know if the AC wasn't working or what, but I know we had the windows crack. You know what I mean? So <laughs> people stay away. I'm talking about she rolling. I take a little nap, wake up. You know what I mean? Make sure everything cool, go back down. You know what I mean? Man, how, long yeah. take you guys, how long did it take to get there? Man, I'm not sure, man. Probably about at that I, I was I was 15 at the time. Just turned 15. So probably, man, I I, I Probably about 11, 12, 13 hours, somewhere around now. Jeez. Yeah, and she drove it straight. No rest. Wow. She was had, she was set on, man. They're not gonna do you like this. You finna have your you finna have the same shot that they have. You know what I mean? And I'm like, cool. She was like, you rest. I'm gonna get us there. I'll rest when we get there. And mm -hmm. I remember pulling up. Somebody just said 15 hours. So 15, 15 hours. My man. Yeah, and my man's too. That's what's up. I remember pulling up. Uh, we pull up to the gym. We went to the gym. Um, little older like gym. You know what I mean? I forgot what school, what campus it was on. But was yeah. it Fairleigh Dickinson? Yeah, there it is. Fairleigh yeah. Dickinson. So we, we pull up in that gym. Mind you, I'm from the South. Like, hey, young kid, what up, baby? Uh, I ain't been out the Lord. South, dog. You know what I mean? And all I know is the South. So once we get to the East Coast, I'm like, man, I can walk in the gym. Son of a Carol walk up to us. It was like my mom was like my mom was gonna make it happen. <laughs> See, I don't know he walked up to her or she walked up to him, but they met. You know what I mean? I don't know if she was asked way yet, but as soon as we got in there, Sonny came up. He was like, "No, nah, let's get him get to the hotel. Let's let him get changed. Um, he can play today if he wants to, but he can rest also." And she was like, "Um, nah, he ready. He ready. He don't rest. He rest." I'm, I'm thinking myself like, "Hold up, dog, like." And he just throw me in the fire, but at the same time, I'm like, shit, let's do it. You know what I mean? So um, we, uh, Sonny, get us in the limo, take us over there to the hotel, change, I get in there, come back to the um, come back to the gym, we're doing some workouts, doing some individual stuff. So really didn't have to play five on five at that moment. 
You know what I mean? Did the workouts and about a day or two later, they put us on teams. And I remember getting up there, man, and I'm 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 looking around like, damn. There's some dogs up here, but I don't know nobody name or nothing. All I know at this time is what you see is street smell. You know what I mean? So I don't I can't put the face with the name or nothing. I'm just like, damn, there's a lot of dudes up here. And everybody getting that, and you see a couple people clicked up. You know what I mean? So when it's time to play, our first game is against um Donnell Harvey. Donnell Harvey, Florida. Yeah, no play in our class, you know what I mean? You know, I was a class of 99, no more play in our class. So um I remember a coach subbed me in the game. I don't even start. He subbed me in the game. He was like, You got Don, you got the Harvey. I'm like, that's cool. Huh? That's what's up. You know what I mean? I want him, you know what I mean? So uh, we come down, we inbound the ball, pass it to me on the wing, first play, I cross him. Boom. Get to the cup, finish. Mm. Um, they go wild. They're like, oh, okay, okay. They go back down. Now, let, let me, let me, I want to ask you this now. Okay. <clears throat> real, real quick. Does anyone at the camp, aside from your mom mm -hmm. and Sonny Vaccaro, mm -hmm. does anyone else at the camp know who Ron Slay is? I got a clue. Cool. Okay. I got oh, a clue. I'm okay. looking for the Memphis dudes we're supposed to ride up there with. I don't even see them. I don't know if they got sidetracked, caught a flat or what, but whatever it was, I don't even know what they was. You know what I mean? So I remember Bobby Dodd. Um, he was over the Memphis um, AAU landscape. Okay. You know what I mean? And, you know, he had it out for our team, which was from Nashville, Coach Fisher and them. And, you know, he got caught up in a whole bunch of scandal and foolishness, you know what I mean, which – you know, they call them or something else. But um, I'm looking for them. I don't even see them. I don't know them. They don't know me. Okay. I'm up there on the court, cross this man, come back down. We get the ball again. Our coach called a timeout. So when it comes to the timeout, he was like, hey, man, do that again. I'm like, see, what I do? You know what I mean? Because I ain't, I ain't polished at, at nothing. I'm just athletic. You know what I mean? 15. Yeah, at 15. Sophomore, 15. going into your junior year. Going into my junior year. Yep. So um, I said, yeah, I can do it again. So I get it again on the wing, same move. Cross them, get their floater. Floater go in. I'm like, I'm, by this time, I'm feeling it like, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm in here, you know what I mean? But while I'm bouncing, though, they outlet me to him. <laughs> he down there at the other end by himself at the free throw. He can't just take one dribble and windmill it. And I'm sitting there like, damn, that was, that was different. <laughs> you know what I mean? so my coach out there, hey, man, you got to get back. I said, damn. Me, you know what I, mean? I don't know about this. So that was one of the, the um spots that um that clear that 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 stood out to me about that. You know what I mean? And after I was like, um, you know what? I, I think I've arrived. And I remember coming out of it when I got back to Nashville. I was getting ready to go play AU in North Carolina. First game that when I got back to A AU, I dropped fifty. Mm. So automatically in my head, I'm like. No, something different. And I didn't know it was me being up there. Oh, at Adidas camp, I knew who Tracy McGrady was. Tracy McGrady stepped up and had his guys from Mount Zion, Derek Payne, all them guys, you know what I mean? Um, and were went to Adidas, you know, they had the pop-up shop and bought it all out. And I remember sitting in the lobby like, damn, man, that's kind of cold, man. They that's what's up. They were telling me, like, Tracy McGregor, man, you know, we're going to draft this year. So I'm having eye-opening experiences while I'm there, you know what I mean? And, and taking it back and just putting it in my middle roller decks, like, damn, I want to be doing that, you know what I mean? I can't wait till next time I get to come up here, I'm going to be more comfortable with this, that, and the other, and be ready to roll. So that was my experience. And, and once I got on that level, I got back, killed in the AU, um, going into my junior year in high school, that's when they came out with the rankings. And I think they had me like 78th or something like that. I'm like, damn. In the country. Yeah. I'm like, man, they got me. They got me up. At this time, I'm like, shit, I'm pretty high. Because I don't know. I'm from not being known to. Right. Seven, eight. I'm thinking to myself, like, man, I must have made an impact of that somehow, some way. You know what I mean? But, and that, that's that right there. My sophomore year going into my junior year, I knew I had something, man. And it was on. When did you. <laughs> What when, when? <laughs> Yo, he told me to ask you. He told me Keisha Clark told me to ask you. He told me to ask you a couple questions too. We're gonna get into that. Oh later. yeah, let me call these dogs, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey boy, see they won't see they hey boy. I'm older now, man. <laughs> I'm 
yeah, yeah so <clears throat> Oak Hill, Oak Hill Academy. Right. How did that come about? When did you decide that you were going to leave mm -hmm. Tennessee, go out to Virginia, that whole process? What, what, how did I like, what was that process like? Man, greatest, that was the, uh, the toughest decision of my life, the best decision of my life. Um, going from my junior year, I was always the young pup. You know what I mean? I always played with older guys, you know what I mean? And um, all my guys that were a year ahead of me were leaving. So we had John Henderson, who was number one player in the nation um, in, in, in high school in football. He was top 10 in basketball. And we had um, a, a talented group for an inner city team. Like, that was pretty serious. Everybody went, everybody went to college. Everybody had college offers, you know what I mean, from 1 through 12. Mm. And all of them were leaving. I would have been left by myself. I had a couple guys that were young to me, sophomores that were coming under, that were going to be okay, but I would have had to, to handle the load. You know, we had a lot of um, a lot of good times them years leading up to my getting ready to go into my senior year. Terry Reynolds was on my team. Um, his dad took him to Oak Hill Academy our sophomore year. So he went in sophomore year. Ron Mercer... His mom, Bergie, and my mom are good friends. Mm. She told him about Oak Hill and it'll be a good look. You know what I mean? Um, I remember <clears throat> I'm playing football in the preseason. I go up, catch a pass, come down, break my fall, which you know what I'm supposed to do, break my wrist. So my shooting arm is broken. Um, I'm out in the cast. And my mom, my um, mentor, and my coach, we're all like, let's ride up here to Oak Hill and take a look at the cameras. They tricking me. They've been working and pulling strings behind the scenes. Wow. They just pop this up on me like, let's ride up here. You know what I mean? In wow. the before the basketball scene. So I go up there. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's ride. You know what I mean? We get up there. We get on the road. Finally get up there. Get off the exit. I'm like, damn, we here. Stop at the gas station. I'm like, how far is Oak Hill? They're like, man, you got about an hour to go up, up, up the road. I said, damn, off the interstate? We just, come on, man. So already I'm like, no, nah, man, this is going to be the country for real. I'm, you know what I mean? Let me get me back to the crib. You know what I mean? They're like, nah, let's go. So we get up there, pull up the Oak Hill campus, walk into Turner Gymnasium, um, see Coach Smith, holler at Coach Smith. Um, they call it Terry and I see little Terry. And then the rest of the team come in, <clears throat> the team from 98, um, Kevin Lyad, Jules Kamara, Antoine Scott, Kadir Richard, Lois Price, Taj Hawkins. Uh, like these dudes, like I know these dudes now because I'm, you know, I'm in Street Smiths. I'm, I'm ranked, I'm keeping up with it now. You know what right. I mean? So I'm putting names with faces. I'm like, damn, man, they got them all. These niggas come in. See, these brothers come in 16, 6, 11, 6, 11, 6, 11, 6, 9. Mm. I'm like, whoa. You know what I mean? Um, so hear me. I'll be like, this is my man Slate, you know what I mean? From the crib. I've been telling y'all about this, that, and the other. I'm like, all right. So we go in the office of uh, Holly Coach Smith. He was telling me, you know, like, you know, we got a couple guys that's, you know, me trying to come in, come to Oak Hill next year. I think we would love to have you, you know what I mean? So I let my mom and them do the talking, you know what I mean? I walk out there in the gym, I'm out there with the assistant coach. I'm shooting with my left hand. I'm making everything. I don't know how this is. I've never shot with my left hand. I'm one hand bandit, you know what I mean? I'm making everything. So I'm like, man, let me stop <laughs> before, before I start messing something up, you know what I mean? And, and Coach Smith walking in, and, um, Coach Stoneman, he told me, man, he's pretty good with his left, Coach. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm straight. You know what I mean? And he was like, do you think you can cut it up here? you think you'd like to be away from your family, this, that, and other? I'm like, man, I don't know. I'm looking around at the banners, the jerseys. I'm like, could be, but you got to remember, man, I'm, I'm loving home. Like, this is Oak Hill stuff. This is cool, but I'm not knowing the basketball scene, the landscape. Of right. I'm not really knowing who Oak Hill is or anything. I know Mercer went there, but shit, he was no more player in the nation. He's and I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, did you know prior to that? Did you know anything about the the? Oh, he froze up. He froze up. Let me 
Chico. They try to hate on us. They can't stop it. Nah, we good. They can't stop it, man. They can't stop it. They can't stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so, so I don't remember what, seeing the jerseys. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna I was gonna ask you, did you know prior to that? And even even once you heard Ron Mercer had, you know, made the trek over there and your teammate made the trek over there. Did you know anything about the, the history and the rich tradition about Oak Hill? Man, not a clue. Mm. Not a clue. I just knew that <clears throat> Little Terry was already up there. And his dad was, was he knew a lot about the basketball scene and was on top of it. You know what I mean? And I'm just taking their word for it. Like, it must be something. You know what I mean? Right. He took Terry from Pearl Cone as a sophomore and took him up there. And he never came back. You know, and I knew Terry was cold. He was one of the coldest guards around him. Mm. So I was like, darn it. Then I knew Mercer, but still it didn't dawn on me. Like, I still it didn't dawn on me to where I was. <laughs> I still wasn't looking like that. I'm in Oak Hill. Look at the, I can see the banners. I can see all the jerseys. See Stackhouse, McGinnis, Kirk Staples. I see all of it on the wall. Everybody. Still ain't on me. Still, mm. I'm still like, man, shh, I ain't really with this, man. I'm in Pearl, man. You know what I mean? So Coach Smith was like, Okay, we'll talk later in the year. I go back down, have a, a really good junior year, and the rest was history. The rest was history. When I got back up there, I remember um, reaching out. I didn't want to go. I remember the talk. Me and my mom going to tug of war with this, like, I ain't going, I ain't going. My coach, uh, football coach, Coach Fitzgerald, had to sit me down and was like, listen, man, this is a great opportunity for me. You go up there. Everything is gonna be exactly the same when you get back here. Mm. I'm like, coach, man, I made my friends, man. I'm trying to win Mr. Basketball, like that's a big thing, you know what I mean? I want to win Mr. Basketball, this, that, and the other. He's like, man, listen, man, you can do the same thing now. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't got no Mr. Basketball in the state of Virginia, man. I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> He's like, yes, they do, man. It's cool, yeah. So I'm like, all right, man. You know what I mean? I'm like, cool. Let me go see what it's about. Went up there. And all the whole time, by this time, I did a little research. I know what Oak Hill is, you know what I mean? I done talked to Mercy, like, nah, this this it. You know what I mean? You go do this. It's bigger than what you done did here in the city, you know? Mm. So I, I'm like, all right. all right, cool, I'm going. And also, they sponsored by Nike, sponsored by Jumpman. Right. And I'm like, cool. That, that really done sold me. So now I'm thinking, I think back to my sophomore year, you know what I mean, going into my junior year this summer, oh, I get the ups on, on the Nike camp. You know what I mean? I get to get in there. I get to get an ABCD camp again. Oh, I can't wait. Man, I get up there, man. I was talking to Coach Smith. My, my, um, my grades get up there. Man, Miss Smith said, what were you doing at school? Mm. I, I was hooping. What you mean? What you mean? What you mean? <laughs> What you mean was I, what was I doing? I was at school, going to class, and then I was hooping. That, that's it. She was yeah. like, these grades right here, you're not going to make it. I was like, what you mean? She's like, you got a 1.2. A 1.2? A 1.2, dog, core. <laughs> Mind you, I still don't know. I'm like, all right, so what you saying? She was like, <laughs> <laughs> what that mean? You know what I mean? Yo, you ain't, you ain't know? No. I'm like, man, I, well, I know I got I know I got to do the ACT. I know that. You know what I mean? I know I'm, I ain't thinking about GPA or nothing like that. I'm thinking, I'm so green to it, man. And all I'm thinking is who, 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 who. Right. Seeing my partners, they going to UT in football. I'm seeing them, I'm seeing what they're doing. It still ain't dawning on me, like, no, you gotta have some grades, man. And the guidance counselors and stuff ain't telling me this. You know what I mean? They're not so, telling you, they're not telling you any of this. Mm -mm. That's one thing about the inner city schools down here, man. I don't know how it is up there on the East Coast, but down here, it, it's gotten stronger as of late because there's more programs and stuff in place from our era that wouldn't let people fall through the cracks like that. It's different now. But at that point, we had ACT prep and everything. So I'm cool on ACT. I know how to take that. I'm, I'm good. I still think that PE hold the same weight as uh, math in the core. I'm like, see, I. Man, I, I, I might have made a C in math, and I turn around like, well, I made an A in PE. I'm, don't that average out? C 
somehow, you know? Yo. Oh, man. They like, no, nah, man. So I'm like, darn. So I got to go to summer school Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday. Here by myself. Ain't no other players up there. You know what I mean? Only um, only ones that were returning anyway was Terry Reynolds and Travis Watson. Um, so um, he was the only one returning. He came down there with me for about two weeks. So they still ain't dropped the bomb on me that I ain't going to be able to go to no camps or nothing because of school. Man, I'm like, man, this is Coach Smith. I know where I'm at now. But when I'm up there for two weeks, I don't work the camps. I know what Oak Hill is now. I know the waiting hole. I know who Coach Smith is. I know he's legendary. I've I been seeing the wall. I'm going to be watching all the old school highlight tapes, Stackhouse and them. Like, I'm watching all. I know now. For them two weeks that I've been up there, I'm like, oh, I'm in a special place. I would have been BS that I ain't come up here. You know what I mean? So now I'm thinking, I got Oak Hill behind my name. I'm going to go to Nike and do a no. You know what I mean? I can't. I'm going to go in that thing so cocky. What's up? You know what I mean? Yeah, you feel me? I remember I'm going to buy out the, you know what I mean, the pop-up shop. Somebody got to go buy something out for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we get ready. We're a week away. I'm like, Coach Smith still ain't mentioned. They just got me working out, going to school, working out, going to school. I'm like, we sitting there. I'm sitting at Smith house, Coach Smith house one day eating. I'm like, man, Coach, can't wait, boy. Nike camp right around the corner, boy. You going, you going up there with me? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm talking, you going up there with me? He's like, nah, I slay the hog. I ain't going to be able to go. I said, huh? That's cool. You know what I mean? As long as I'm there, I feel you, Coach. No, don't worry. I'm going to hold it down for the hill. Don't need trip. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he let me go on by, eat dinner, and everything. I go on back. The next morning, he called me in the office while I'm going to school. He like, slay the hog. You ain't really do what you're supposed to do in, in class, man. Your, your GPA ain't really what it need to be. I was like, Coach, when, when the ACT come around, though, I'm going to. At least 21. I know what to do. I, I know how to take it. I know what to do. He's like, yeah, I slayed on, but we got to get that 1.2 up. <laughs> he ain't took no core classes. I'm like, what, what, what do you tell me? So he, him and Miss Smith come in and explain to me what it is and how bad you need it. So I'm like, all right, cool. You ain't going to be able to make it to the night camp because you can't miss school. I said, Coach, one day? Just let me go play one day. He's like, you can't miss a day. Because a, a, a day's worth of work was like a week or a half a week worth of work. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I'm taking like four classes during the summer, man. I'm in there from 8 in the morning to 3 or 4 in the evening, man. Monday? Monday, Monday Saturday. Saturday. Saturday was 8 to 11, 30. But still, you're in there on Saturday. You know right, what I mean? Right, <laughs> as a seven, As a 16 year old, I'm 16. I'm like, okay. Cool. I ain't going to be able to go to Nike. All right. All right. Ain't the end of the world. At least go to Adidas. You ready to go to Adidas camp? Same thing. Coach, you tell me I'm getting ready to go on my senior year. I don't get to go to no camps. Damn. I'm like, nah, this ain't really right, Coach. I ain't really, I, I'm, man, I ain't really come up with this, man. He was like, trust me, it's going to pay off in the end. Man, you ain't got to worry about it. Like, we're going to play enough teams where your ranking and all that's going to go up. We're going to play a national rank schedule. I'm like, yeah, Coach, man. But, man, Steve Blake, he going. Travis going. Like, Cliff Hawkins, he going. Like, it's, like everybody's coming back, man. Going, man. But I, what about me? You know what I mean? And I thugged it out, man. Thugged it out through that summer. Got my GPA up. I think I got my GPA up to, like, a 2-1 or a 2-2 going into – the school year, and picked it up even higher going, um, finishing out the year. And then, and then I ended up getting a um, 19 on the ACT. So once I think I, I finished with like a 2.6, 2.7 or something, right. and then got 19, and I was I was cool with that. And I loved them for that, but man, to this day, I was sick about not doing it. Because to me, that's where all that McDonald's All-American game and stuff is picked from. And me coming from the South, not knowing about the East Coast, the guys from there had an upper hand on me. Right. You know what I mean? Like the Jordan Cap Classic. Like if you grow up in D.C. and you could cook in D.C. and you was a cooker man, 
you gonna be in the cap classic game. That's right. just that's, that's just what it is. Right. Me, I gotta work a little hard. I gotta do my stuff. I gotta do all the prelims. You know what I mean? I need to go kill in this cap. You know what I mean? So it didn't work out, but it was um Oak Hill man was a, a terrific experience. One of the greatest years of my life, man. We ended up being number one in the nation. Went thirty one and all. We beat um Tyson Chandler and then the Compton Dominguez. They had a, a mob. Mm -hmm. Um him and Marcus Moore. Um, then we played Mount Zion. They had Hargett, <clears throat> Jonathan Hargett, Marquise Day. Oh. Man, they, they was loaded. You know what I mean? We spanked them up. Um, played them three times a year, spanked them every time. But the thing I want, if you ever get to talk to Keith Bogus and Joe Forte, we was looking for y'all, DeMalcolm. We was look. I'm talking to the camera. We was looking for y'all. <laughs> Yo. The St. Yo. James Invitational. You was so, so, so you, you. You had you had it out for Keith Bogans and Joe Forte. Yeah, we had it out for the math. Mm. We used to always hear the comparisons. Like now, 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 mind you, I became so much more knowledgeable about the game right. of basketball, being in Oak Hill, knowing the history, knowing the national scale is on. Like all I knew was Tennessee coming into it. Right, coming up there, like my eyes were open. The only thing I got to do before summer school started, was go play in the tournament with Virginia Select, me and Travis Watson. And we got to play against uh, Joe and uh, Bo and Keith um, in the tournament. We kind of went to a stalemate, you know what I mean? They got down, we got down, you know what I mean? And um, I was like, man, we're going to see them during the year. And then Travis was schooling me because he had already been in Oak Hill, you know what I mean? So he played that national schedule. So he was schooling me throughout, but – I always used to hear comparisons with Coach Smith and Coach Wooten. Salute, you know what I mean? Like two great coaches. Um, and then the tradition that the math had. Right. You know what I mean? I never knew about it. Yeah, I never Rich. knew about the history of yeah, Barry. So I never knew how Oak Hill. I knew that. I knew that tradition. Knew the math was when I got there, and I got dropped in the middle of it. And, and mm. competitive as I am, I'm, we need to see them. So Coach was like, "Be cool, be cool." St. James Invitational. In Maryland, we were supposed to meet up with them. So we just won. We just went out there and spanked Compton. We won the Las Vegas Big Time Tournament um, out there in Vegas. Um, I got the MVP of that. Um, we spanked some other some other mobs, Louisville Ballard. We spanked, we spanked a couple of my Omar Cook and Price of King. We won that one by one. Oh, oh Cook, boy. Woo, salute to O Cook. Tough. Woo! Boy, I, I almost got caught watching that game. Him. <laughs> Omar Cook and Cliff Hawkins, dog. Yo, I said yo, you going said, at it. You said you got caught watching? Hell yeah. Like, I remember Travis telling me, hey, dog, come on. Like, I'm like, man, look at these dudes. Like, look what they're doing at the point spot. Mm. Like, they're going to work. You know what I mean? Them, uh, we played Conquer that had Matt Bonner. We played uh, Brett Nelson, them team that was out of West Virginia. Played a nice, a nice schedule. You know what I mean? And St. James was supposed to be the top. Man, before we get up there, man, they holler like the mouth to pull it out. They pulled I'm, out. I'm sick. I'm like, this is what the next. I think they were ranked third at the at the time. And y'all were one. Us. Yeah, we were one. I think Dominguez might have moved back up to two, and then the mouth was three, or vice versa. But I know we was one. And we was like, man, we for the sell this. I can't wait to get to them. And they pulled out of it, man. I could. I, I, and I was like, man, this on y'all turf. Mm. This in Saint James. This in Maryland. What's up, like? What's up? This on y'all. Like, <laughs> man, they pulled out. I was sick about that, but we ended up um, going to have a, a good year, man. Steve Blake was a great point guard. Um, I salute to him. Did great things in Maryland. Played long tenure in the league. Cliff Hawkins. And uh, Cliff Hawkins went on to Kentucky. And um, salute for him. D.C. Assault had them ready when they walked in. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, Terry Reynolds. Then we had me and Travis down low. And, you know, we had we had three, two or three guys coming off the bench helicopter. They played in the M one. Um, he was coming off the bench for us, and we and um, we had a good team, man, real good team. Went thirty one low, thirty one and zero, one national championship. Um, name was cemented. Um, one thing that pissed me off about the whole thing was, at this point, after we win it, Bob Gibbons came to about five games. You know what I mean? So my thing is, once I know we got it wrapped up, hey man, how we gonna get this? I want to be on that ball. That all American ball. How are we gonna get that? So at this time, Bob Gibbons got me ranked 14th. So I moved all the way up 
from 78 to 14. 14. I, I moved all the way up. I'm like, cool. You know what I mean? The cake leave was off. And even if it ain't me, somebody on our mob got to make it. Between me, Steve, Blake, and Travis Watson, somebody got to be a, a McDonald's or something. You know what I mean? Um, Bob Gibbons, he, he had to talk with Coach Smith, and Coach Smith explained to me, man, a lot of us picked during the preseason. You know what I mean? That summer. Very seldom do guys climb up the charts, right? And all of a sudden, you know what I mean, you in the game. But the crazy thing for me was, like, if it's two teams and there's 12 to 15 players on each team, that's 24 to 30 guys. I'm 14. Right, right. On the number one team in the nation, by this time, I won the player of the year in Virginia, the MVP on the team, like, the lead score on the team, mm. second to rebound to Travis, like, I don't, every stage it is to show up on, I show up. You did it. I'm like, what's up? Man, they, they left me off. I, it, it hurt me. It hurt me in my heart. I think they gave Travis Parade All American. But me and Steve, we didn't get neither one. McDonald's operated. So I was like, man, that, that's kind of messed up, man. And I think down my line, that hurts you from, you know what I mean, being, because once you get stamped, you know what I mean? And it's, and I, that, it's crazy that's how it works. But once you get stamped, it's hard to get out that club. Right. You know what I mean? They remember right. you. They know your name. And it's you go into college and do work, and you you both. You know what I mean? So it, it, it was cool, man. It just lit my fire getting ready to go into the University of Tennessee. Though. Now, I'm glad you brought that up. Because that, that was going to be my next question. Now, was it an easy decision for you to stay home and choose Tennessee? At that time, yeah, okay. because um, um, we had at the University of Tennessee the year before, we had a nice influx of talent in the state of Tennessee. So we had Tony Harris. Tough. Uh, tough. Yeah, tough. Very tough. So he's up there. He's McDonald's, Mr. Basketball. Right. They had Vincent Yarbrough. Tough. I mean, McDonald's, Mr. Basketball. He up there. Then we had Charles Hathaway. He was McDonald's before the blood clots and all that. He was black. McDonald's went up there. Um, CJ Black and Chattanooga Brainerd, um, UT's leading shot blocker in history. Then we had Harris Walker. In my class, we had Harris Walker, Mr. Basketball, went to Hargrave Military Academy for a year. Me, John Higgins from Shaker Heights, Ohio, Marcus Hayslip um, from right here in Tennessee, and then um, well, Terrence Woods. From Memphis, Mr. Basketball. So, the, what, what what caught my eye was this was the only team that had ten of the twelve players from the state of Tennessee on the mm. team. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I ain't seen it done in college since. Right. You know? And this might have been luck of the draw, and that's how it felt. But I remember Arkansas. I wanted to go to Arkansas. I love Nolan Richardson, um, but they kind of tailored off a little bit by that point. Right. And um, Kentucky, I remember Tubby coming up there to recruit Cliff Hawkins, and um, he had just recruited Julius Kamara. And I remember when he came up there, Tennessee had I, – I, I was uh, – I verbally committed to Tennessee before I went to Oakville, my junior year. Okay. And um, <laughs> I remember when everybody was coming up there, Gary Williams was coming to see Steve Blake. Pete Gillard was coming to see Travis Watson from Virginia – um, and I'm like, damn, what Tennessee at? You know what I mean? And I remember seeing K K Kentucky rolling. I'm like, nah, this ain't. Ain't nobody been up there to see me yet? Nah, I'm getting disrespected, man. So I remember talking to Coach Smith, like, hey, man, I want to open my recruitment back up, Coach. He's like, oh, Slate, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. I said, what up, DJ? What's up, baby? Oh, uh, you know them definitely the Italy battles. Oh, <laughs> uh, so. James, salute. <clears throat> I'm like, Kentucky, I, I want to go to Kentucky, really. You know what I mean? Honestly, at this point, and Coach Smith was like, no, nah, I don't think we need to do that because it's going to make it look like right. I wavered, I swayed right. you to go in that way. Right. And, you know what I mean? And I was like, I understand that, Coach, man, but they got to get up there and recruit. So they came up there. I think he said, go back to sleep on it. They came up there the next week, back to back, like three or four days in a row. And I was like, all right, I don't stick with it. You know what I mean, rolling. Plus, I had a lot of friends down there. And I could see, honestly, Tennessee was about to do something special. You know what I mean? Like, with that talent all going in one place, and I always felt like we was the underdog, 
And I always felt like I was going to be able to stamp any program I went to and help us get on the map, just the way I was boisterous and played like that. So I was like, shit, well, let, let me roll with the home team. You know what I mean? Your freshman yeah. year now. Your freshman yeah. year, you, you, you go in, you average about, I want to say maybe like 10, 10 and 5. Yeah. Very good freshman campaign. Yeah. Was your freshman year what you expected? Yeah. SEC, one of the top conferences in the country. Right. Right. Night in, night out. Every game, every game, dogfight. Yes. After your freshman year, was it what you expected? And what was the transition like going from <clears throat> Oak Hill to Tennessee? It was, as far as the transition, it was smooth just because – we were so competitive at Oak Hill. Like, our practices, dog, we split five up and five up. And it's blood. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, we got to go. I got to go back to the dorm to stay with these dudes. I can't be in there with them talking about, hey, man, we, we, we drug y'all today. Like, no, homie, uh-uh. No, we get to it. So we took that same competitiveness I did and took it to Tennessee. And once I got there, it was dogs already there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't realize that. But we brought five freshmen in, and the first day, this is when I knew we were going to do something good. First day, Isaiah Victor knocked on our door. Boom, 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 boom. Me and T. Woods are roommates. Terrence Woods from Memphis. He was like, oh, y'all want to go hoop? I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's go. So we get up there, the whole squad up there. We're trying to pick teams. And I remember saying, no, nah, it's cool. Y'all get y'all five upperclassmen. It's five of us freshmen. Let's rock. You know what I mean? And, it, and I mean, it was about a two-hour battle. People getting dunked on, crossing, mm. scoring, mm. like, and nobody backing down. You know what I mean? You got uh, Vincent Yarbrough coming as an all-SEC. They going at him. Tony Harris and Harris Walker, they going at it. They both all-SEC. Then the big man, C.J. Black and um, Isaiah Victor, me and Marcus Hayslip going at him. So it was good, man. And then after the game was over, Shit, everybody was like, man, where we going? Where we, you know what I mean? And it was like a family automatically. This was in the summer before the school year and the season even got there. So mm -hmm. we had already jailed immediately. Plus, we was all from Tennessee. We all liked the same things. You right. know what I mean? It wasn't nobody coming into it like, man, you got to listen to my music. You know what I mean? That little stuff, that little bit of stuff, you throw a whole, uh, 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 you know what I mean? everything out of whack. And it didn't. You know what I mean? And going into the season, had a good season. I did think it was everything that I thought it would be. Um, I wanted more playing time, of course, but Isaiah Victor was ahead of me, and he was he was doing his thing. You know what I mean? And I respect him even more to this day because he could have been an older guy. He was a junior, redshirt junior at the time. He could have been an older guy that didn't didn't mess with me or didn't show right. me the ropes or anything. I could have hated. You know what I mean? Like let the young dude figure it out or whatever. He took me on this wing and was like, nah, man, you got to do it this way, this way. You know what I mean? Pick your tools. And, you know what I mean? I was like, damn, that's, that's what's up. So we split time. You know what well, I mean? They said, they said your first two years, your freshman, your freshman and your sophomore year, you were considered one of the best six men yeah. in the yeah. country. Yeah. Did that you let me know. Your, your, your first, now, your first two years, like I said, you averaged 10 and about – your sophomore, you up your average to about 13 and 6, yep. right? Yep. Did you pride yourself on stepping into that six-man role and saying, listen, I'm, 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 I'm going to get mines, but if yep. I got to get it being a six-man, I'm going to do that? Yes. Yes. I felt like these were upperclassmen, and I've always been the one. Remember, I told you, I was always the little dog anyway. You know what I mean? Playing with upper upperclassmen or older guys. So I'm cool with paying my dues. Like, I'm with that. And I remember when I was sitting on the bench, like, dude, I would be, it's, they might as well have a leech clip to my neck on the bench. I would be, I'd be leaning and rocking like, boy, I can't wait for him to say, Slay, go off. You know what I mean? You see that little smoke like Wiley Coyote behind me. I'm out. You know what I mean? So I prided myself on being able to watch the game, see what we were lacking, and be able to bring exactly what we needed whether it be energy, whether it be toughness, whether it be scoring, whether it be defense, maybe it's a charge just to change the momentum, all of that. 
You know what I mean? Plus, I was going to be going bananas for the crowd anyway because that was just me. You know what I mean? So I know one thing for sure. I got the crowd behind me. If I ain't in in a minute, they're going to be chatting, slay, slay. You know what I mean? So I knew how to play that game too. You feel me? So I got them. And, man, it was it was everything, man. Like, I, I six man, best six man in the nation my freshman year, coming in my sophomore year, ended up making third team all SEC. Yes. Which was – that was huge to me, man. Like, and I, and the the funny thing is, I didn't set out to do that. I wasn't right. trying to do that. I was just being me. You know what I mean? And the success we had as a team, it showed, man. And I, I man, that was that was that was some fun, fun times, man. Fun times. How, how, how disappointed? Now you come in your junior year. Now. Mm -hmm. You're averaging fifteen and about seven, fifteen yeah. six and a half, seven boards. Yep. You tear your ACL. Mm hmm How disappointing was that? And what kind of what kind of setback was it for you mentally? Um it was tough, man, because after my sophomore year, going into the summer, first off, we lost um, an NCAA tournament to Charlotte, Rodney White, Joby Thomas, those guys. Um, they beat us in Dayton in the first round of the tournament. Well, wasn't no we, wasn't no way we were supposed to lose. So ended up losing that game. And I remember sitting in the locker room and looking at Tony Harris, Isaiah Victor, like, damn man, we let our boy, I let my boys down. You know what I mean? Like, I know it wasn't all on me, but I'm feeling like, man, this summer. Now, we coming back with a vengeance, you know what I mean? Like, this, we getting to it. So, we all flew out to Oakland to work out. Me, Vincent Yarbrough, and Dale Baker. Oakland. Flew out to Oakland to work out with his, his pops, Lil Dot Dust. So, we working out out there for about three weeks. Personal trainer, <clears throat> getting to it, going up there to hoop the cow, you know what I mean? And then we giving them that work. You know what I mean? Joe Ship, salute to all them cats like that, you know what I mean? We giving them that work. Yeah, I ain't saying nothing bad about them, but there was some different dogs walking in. You know what I mean? And we wanted to put our name down. Had a great summer. So by the time we getting ready to go into June, yeah, I'm like, this is it. Mind you, I'm watching the landscape of the SEC basketball. Right. I mean, I'm seeing the Keith Bogans and, and Joe Johnsons and Matt Bonners and Donnell Harvick. Like, I see it. You know what I mean? Night in, night out, you got a dog fight. You got to be able to come with it. And I'm coming with it. So I'm like, okay, going into junior year, it's a possibility. It ain't got in my head yet. It's a possibility. We can all all three get out of here. Me, Marcus A. Slip, and Vincent Yarbrough. Um, start off, I have a stress fraction. So I'm out for two, two to three weeks mm. in a boot. So I missed the first two or three weeks. Marcus Hayslip got to sit out for grades uh, for about the, probably the first six games. So we all finally get on on the court at the same time. We go down to SMU to play Gerald Sasser. Uh, they had a nice mob. Went down there spanking. We all three had 20. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, we might got some. Go to University of Memphis, play them. Then we ended up losing, but all, all three of us had good games. Go into SEC play, first two games, we rocking. Vince averaging 21, Slip averaging 20, I'm averaging 19. It's all like we got our eyes set on the prize. Got the break from Syracuse to the ACL. Automatically at that point, I was like, damn, everything we worked hard for, it's all gone. And the funny thing, let me tell you the power of words. At this point, in the season, you know, <clears throat> phone ringing off the hook. Hey, man, we need tickets for such and such and such, such. I got all kind of people calling me, you know what I mean? I remember laying in bed the night before the Syracuse game and thinking, and I said out loud, hey, God, I wish you would get these people up off me. Like, please, all this. I'm just trying to hoop. You know what I mean? I don't want nothing to do with nothing. Like, let all these people stop calling. Damn. You know what I mean? This is what you say the night before. Out loud, in my bed, by myself. And I ain't, I, straight up, in the next game, Syracuse game, on a fluke, I come out, hit a three, start the game off, boom, we rolling. Jeremy McNeil is playing for Syracuse, big man. 
Um, I come down, get it dropped off the vents, and this is what's playing in my head since the last dance is on. Michael Jordan, when he dunked on Pat Ewan, it was, you know what I mean, talking to him. <laughs> I went up there and dropped it in and got the air one, and I was talking to him, man, you can't guard me. Y'all can't guard me out here. I mean, I go back, shoot the free throw. They come back down, miss it. We come down, Vince pull up for three. I go up to get the rebound. Jerry McNeil, before I'm coming down, he'll do it purposely. Before I'm coming down, tap my knee to knock my balance off just a little bit. Uh, I mean, I done seen worse, you know what I mean, with ACL tail. It was just a slight bump. And when I hit the ground, Vince said he heard a pop. I didn't hear a pop. I was going to I was gonna ask you, right when it happened, did you know? No, because I always, the way I play, I'm always on the ground. I'm always falling this way. Right, 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 right. And I didn't feel, I didn't feel no pop. I was just like, dang. And every time I fall down, I, I'm going to lay down. I'm going to milk it. You know what I mean? This is just part of me. You know what I mean? The crowd got <laughs> everything. You feel me? So, uh, so Vince was like, he put his hand out. It was like, come on, big boy, get up. And I reached up, bro, and I was getting ready to get up. And I was like, man, I can't. He's like, oh, come, yeah, you can't. Come on. I'm like, no, nah, man, so I can't. He called the trainer them over there. They helped me up. And I was walking back, and I was like, feel all right, but let me just get back here in the back. Let me get in the back. So I get in the back, lay me on the table, do my knee. Um, and I was like, hey, doc, Dr. Yonis, just strap me up, man. Just give me a tight knee brace. I'm going to be cool. He was like, just lay here for a second. And I'm going to swallow up like a balloon. I had a towel on my head. I remember my grandma was putting, putting her hand on my chest. And I moved the towel. I looked and saw it was up. I just bust out crying, man. I put the towel on my head. And it was like, damn, man. All of that, it felt like 45 minutes. It was probably like five minutes. And it just started playing in my head. Like, I asked for them to take this away from me. Damn. You know what I'm saying? All these calls, mm. all this so-called stress. You know what I mean? That I'm talking about I can't handle. And all this is why I land on the training table. I'm like, damn. So when I come up out of surgery, you know what I mean? I'm 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 on um, one of my one of my partners taking me back to my apartment. I'm laying in the bed and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, damn. Anybody calling? Mm. Nothing. You know what I mean? And mm. automatically I thought back to dude, this is what I asked for. Wow. You know what I mean? Power words, dog. You put any of that in the atmosphere? Yes, sir. Like, one thing for sure, man, God is always listening. Like, it might not be on your court, but he coming. <laughs> if, 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 if whoever whoever the, their God is, he's coming, and he's going to show you. Let me put my iPad up. He's going to show you what. He's going to show you exactly, you know what I mean, that he's real, and you're not the one in control of this. You know what I mean? All this success, all that. None of that, none of that is nothing, man, without some kind of spiritual base. I ain't telling anybody what they should, you know Listen, what I mean? Go on, that. man. That's me. That, that, nah, mm -hmm. nah, 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 nah. That, that, that goes without saying. Look, right. this thing, it's saying it's going to cut off in like 15 seconds. So I'm going okay. um, to log off. I'm going to come right back on. All right, bet.